Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. How much money for retirement do I really need? That is the question we get a lot, and we provide some answers today. Welcome to the show. First, a quick word from our sponsor. A credit union that offers Bitcoin? Give me five. (laughs) For a limited time only, get $5 of free Bitcoin through the Southland Credit Union app. Enrollment is quick and easy. There's no hidden fees, and you can conveniently fund Bitcoin purchases directly from a Southland account. Claim your free crypto today by going to thecollegeinvestor.com slash Southland. Bitcoin accounts and services provided by NIDIG. Not NCUA insured. Restrictions apply to Bitcoin bonus. See terms. And don't forget to check out thecollegeinvestor.com slash Southland to sign up. All right, so many people wonder just how much money they actually need to retire. In fact, it's actually one of the most common questions people ask in regards to retirement. However, it may not be the easiest question to answer, as there are so many variables. On top of that, not all of the variables are always known. You can get an idea of how much money you need to retire, though, by considering the following questions. What do financial experts recommend? Because the exact amount of retirement money that you will need varies according to your unique financial situation, there isn't one answer that will work for everyone. Instead, Many financial experts offer a variety of different guidelines, and if you search the internet for answers to the question of how much money do I need to retire, you might find advice like the following. A certain percentage of your annual pre-retirement income in the year before you retire, kind of like 80%, 90%, maybe even 70%, a million dollars, 1.5 million, 2 million, 12 times your pre-retirement salary, 10 times, 15 times, etc., And as you can see, there are a wide variety of opinions, which speaks more to the fact that there isn't an easy answer for this question. It's going to be working for everyone. So, how much money do I need is actually the wrong question. In fact, when you ask how much money do I need to retire, you may be asking the wrong question. When you retire, it really doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank. What matters is how much income, usually measured as monthly income, your assets can produce. There are two main categories for generating income in retirement, investment income and passive income. Investment income in retirement. The first way to generate income in retirement is money from any investments that you have. This could be money from a taxable investment account or maybe a retirement account like an IRA. You take a certain percentage of your assets out of your account each year to live on, known as the withdrawal rate. There is different advice on what is a safe withdrawal rate, depending on how aggressive you want to be. If you want to live on $40,000 a year with a 4% withdrawal rate, you will need a million dollars. If you use a more conservative 3.3% withdrawal rate, you'll need $1,212,121. As you can see, your choice of a withdrawal rate that works for you can have a big impact on how much money you need for retirement. Passive income in retirement. Another source of income in retirement is passive income generated from different assets, investments, and activities. One of the most common passive income sources in retirement is real estate, usually rental income, but there are many ways to generate passive income. Dividend stocks, income from a blog or royalties from a published book, are all ways to generate passive income. Every dollar that you earn each month from passive income is one dollar less that your investments need to generate. So what are your current expenses? In figuring out what amount of money you need for retirement, you certainly want to consider how much your current expenses are. Once you have an idea of your current expenses, You can use that to get a ballpark idea for what your expenses might be in retirement. To start, look at your bank, credit card statements and cash outlays over the past three months or so to figure out how much you spend each month. But keep in mind that your expenses in retirement will be different from your current pre-retirement expenses. So here are a few areas where you might need to adjust your forecast. Which of your debts will be paid off? So it is ideal to retire without any debt. But a lot of times people still have some once they retire. 
Keep in mind which of your debts will be paid off before your retirement, like credit cards, mortgage, consumer loans, and student loans. Car loans might be a bit trickier, though, as you might decide to take out new car loans during retirement, or you'll just need one, whether you want one or not. What will your housing expenses be? Your housing expenses may change greatly by the time you are ready for retirement. For example, you may have your mortgage paid off before you retire, or you might decide to downsize to a smaller home for retirement. You might also consider a reverse mortgage for your home or moving to a place with a lower cost of living. Some people in retirement even look to rent out a spare bedroom in their home for some extra income. What insurance policies can actually be dropped? Well, oftentimes you will be able to drop insurance policies once you've retired, including disability insurance, as they won't be necessary anymore. You may also want to consider if you want to keep or drop your life insurance plan, or if you want to revise your life insurance policy. Remember, for most people, life insurance was needed while raising a family. Now that you're retired, your children are most likely self-sufficient adults, which can reduce or eliminate your need for life insurance. What will you do for health care? As you get older, most people's health care expenses go way up. Even if you qualify for Medicare, you might need additional money for co-pays, prescription coverage, or additional insurance. If you've invested in your HSA, you may already have money set aside specifically for health care expenses. If not, you might need to make sure that you have additional money for health care, prescription, or long-term care insurance. Will you spend more or less money traveling? Consider how much you plan on traveling during your retirement, as many people spend a great amount of their retirement leisurely traveling or even enjoying a semi-permanent vacation overseas by staying in a favorite spot for some time. It's also important to keep in mind gas and other expenses associated with car travel. For example, you won't need to drive to or from work anymore, so your gas expenses might be a little bit lower. Here's the bottom line. It's not the total amount of money that you need to have in order to retire, but instead the amount of monthly income that your assets and investments generate. The two main sources of retirement income are investment income and passive income. Once your projected monthly retirement income exceeds your projected monthly expenses, you have enough money to retire. You'll also want to keep in mind that your finances and expenses may change in retirement. It's wise to make sure you have a bit of cushion because you don't want to have to unretire due to running out of money. Always have a plan in place. And that is our show for today. If you want to dive in deeper, find some more resources on what you can do and really great advice on investing, check out thecollegeinvestor.com. Thanks again for stopping by today and we'll talk to you again real soon.